What's going on everyone? So in today's video, we're going to be diving into what is really the hottest topic right now in evangelical circles. And that is the news that Matt Chandler of the Village Church in Flower Mound, Texas has now stepped down um, and has been on a uh, not permanent, but minor leave from being pastor of the Village Church. So before we dive into that, there are a few things we need to be reminded of in Scripture. So we have a few passages in James and then also in 1 Timothy. So in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 7, we really see how um, the overseer and elder is supposed to, to act and how they're supposed to hold themselves and carry themselves. And so as I'm flipping through here, uh, give this message a like, guys. That'll help the uh, YouTube algorithm. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are too. Give a comment. And so 1 Timothy chapter 3 says how our qualifications of being a pastor. And it ends in chapter in verse 7 saying, Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. And then um, in, chap in verse 2, it talks about he must be blameless, husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given over to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission. And so we read that in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. We read about that. And then we read in James chapter 3, verse 1, James's warning to those who, it says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. So before we dive into this whole situation with the Village Church and Matt Chandler, let's keep these verses in mind, guys. I want to encourage you, if you are desiring to be in a pastoral elder, an overseer position, be in prayer and be mindful and understanding of the call that that is and the weight of that call that that causes and brings forth. But also read over 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Have those verses written on your heart, okay? And so now let's dive into the confusing and weird confession from Chandler and the Village Church. So I'll link the sermon so you can have full access to it below. Um, you'll have to fast forward and whatnot, but guys, it was an odd confession. And I say that because everybody is still left in the dark. And everybody meaning everybody who wasn't really involved. So the elders know what's actually happening. Chandler, the woman involved, Chandler's spouse and the woman's husband and and uh, the independent firm that, you know, investigated team that investigated, they all know. But the thing is, is the members of the church, myself, you know, we're kind of left in the dark with this whole situation because we had Josh, I believe his name was Josh, come on the stage and and kind of remind the church how much good the village has done. Um, how many things that the village has done well and, and what, what kind of Chandler has done well. So he kind of gives this setup and then all of a sudden Chandler comes on stage and he is um, obviously sad and uh, upset. Um, and he goes on and talks about how a woman of the church had approached Chandler months ago and told him about how she does she confronted him about some conversation that Chandler was having with one of her friends and uh, she was concerned about it well then Chandler said he immediately took that to some of the elders of the church and then immediately went home after that and told his wife so I don't know if he was trying to get ahead of the game or if he was just being up front who knows and it's not for me to speculate and not for you to speculate so right now he's doing the right things. He's going to the elders, he's going to his wife, and he's saying these things that he was just confronted with. Well then, 
it just gets kind of confusing because Chandler didn't feel as if he did anything wrong and with direct messaging this female on Instagram, apparently they talked quite frequently from what Chandler was saying, but nothing from what Chandler said, the village church elders said, and the independent investigation said nothing was sexual nor romantic between them. So Chandler is now told by the elders of the village church he has to permanently step down as the head pastor for the time being but for what reason? So it just kind of leaves everybody in speculating mode, which is a dangerous place because all of a sudden people can start thinking, well, if it wasn't sexual, if it wasn't romantic, what was he saying in those messages? Was he gossiping? Was he cussing a lot? Was his using foul language? Was he using crude joking? Was It just leads people to assume the worst because... For somebody to be told by their eldership, which is a blessing to have in a church, and if your church doesn't have elders, there's an issue, but um, that's a whole other discussion. So for the elders to come to Chandler and say, you have to step down permanently for the time being, that that's serious. And so I feel as if the members of the church at the village in Flower Mound, um, people like me who have grown up and this and our faith and listen to Chandler and have been invested in, in, in his, you know, pastoral ministry and all those things. Like, I feel like we should know what was said and what was going on just so we have a better understanding, not so we can take what was said and then all of a sudden just cast all these stones at Chandler, but just to give us a better clarity of what's going on, what was said, because how extreme was it? What are they, in a sense, covering up? And so it just kind of leads into a dangerous area where people then view Chandler in a negative light and, and people then start viewing the, the elders and the village church in a negative light of like, what are you hiding from everybody? What, what is going on? And so it's just a very strange situation. It's odd. It's confusing. It just leaves everybody in the dark. And so when you listen to the confession from Chandler and Josh, I think his name is Josh again, on the Village Church uh, live stream, nothing gets really clarified. The only thing that we're told is it didn't get sexual and it wasn't romantic. And so the worst thing that we can do is begin to speculate. And we need to refrain from that as tempting as that is because we don't know what the messages said and I hope that one day they do come out and the church comes out with them and Chandler comes out with them and explains them um, because we don't have those actual proof of evidence of what was said between Chandler and this female who remains anonymous um, the dangerous thing is to do is all of a sudden speculate and assume that this was happening, this was said, this was said. Instead, we need to wait, hold off, be in prayer for everybody involved, the congregation, the village church, the elders, Chandler, the female involved, Chandler's wife, the female's husband, like everybody we need to be praying for is everybody involved in this. And so um, that's my encouragement. That's what I would lead you to go do. Um, that's my hope that you would go do. But again, we are left in the dark. And I think that's a dangerous place for the Village Church to leave us and Chandler to leave us because we don't know what actually happened. And I pray soon that we do. And I pray it's nothing catastrophic, but for a pastor to be told by his eldership, you need to step down permanently for the time being, that is serious. And so be in prayer. I pray that this would lead you to the biblical way to approach this scenario and what happened and that uh, this would help you in your questions of like, what's going on? How should I react to this news? Um, coming from somebody who's personally been impacted by Chandler, man, it's hard for me to hear. It's hard for me to see, but I need to be in prayer for them and everybody involved. So God bless. I hope this leads you in the way of godliness and righteousness towards this whole situation. Thanks for listening.